Gracious eternal Father in heaven, we come once again into thy presence during these precious sacred hours. Now, Lord, in the name of Jesus, as we go through the greatest medical book that's ever been written, through his health presentation and his demonstration. Lord, we pray for the Holy Spirit to bless us with understanding, with clarity, and the right application. Guide us now. Let your angels be in the midst of us. Thank you for our family that's joining us there on social media. And Lord, you instruct, you teach, and your servant will give ears to hear and give us grace to obey. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 All right, we, as usual, we have our afternoon health presentation and demonstration. And we're going to cover some things somewhat familiar with. We're going to look at what we call the physiology of digestion. The physiology. Now, turn to Matthew chapter 9, you have your medical books. Matthew chapter 9. And do we, do we have any mics around here? Okay. Uh, since you have that mic, expeditiously find Matthew 9. <laughs> And read verse 17. <clears throat> Matthew 9, 17. See what it says. Okay, well, wait a give him a mic. Ooh. Matthew 9, verse 17 says, Neither do men put new wine into old bottles, as the bottles break and the wine run out and the bottles perish, but they put new wine into new bottles, mm -hmm. and both are preserved. You cannot put new wine in old bottles, cop. You gotta go with new wine and new bodies. Let's see. <clears throat> Here's our favorite verse. <clears throat> Let's read this together. What does it say? Know ye that the Lord, he is God. It is he that has made us, and not we ourselves. We are his people and the sheep of his path. Now, what does that scripture tell you and I? We belong to God 100% by creation and by redemption, 100%. So it's given us the owner's manual, which is the Bible, because every product comes with a manufacturer's owner's manual. Tell you how to operate the product, how to troubleshoot, and how to even to correct the problem. So here we have God's instruction. Psalms 119, verse 73. Thy hands have fashioned me and made me. Give me understanding, and I shall keep thy commandments. So we see on the screen here, as it is our custom, we follow God's plan. G-O-D-S-P-L-A-M. And this is recorded in inspiration. And these are what we call the eight doctors or the eight laws of health the very foundation for our physical, even spiritual existence, and they are recorded in the book of Genesis. So anyone, tell me what God is saying in this scripture, Proverbs 22, 3. Look at it. A prudent man foreseeth evil and hide himself, but the simple pass on and are punished. What is God saying in that scripture? Anyone. It's a very simple word. You think long, you're going to think, you're going to speak wrong. <laughs> Look at it. Anyone? What do you think it's saying, George? Get George a chance. <laughs> I, I don't know. I, I'm lost on that one. What does the word prudent? A prudent man. Put, 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 put the mic up there. You're on okay. target. Now say it again. Put, put it up there. I, you, uh, I want Kenya to hear you. I want... Scandinavia to hear you. Go ahead, put it up there. A prudent man, when he sees evil, he's going to, he's going to get away from it. He's not going to say, well, well, let's just investigate this. All right, then. Now you're on target, man. Yeah, and, and uh, but the simple know that, that no, oh, what's going on here? Let's just delve into it. And, See, and, uh, no. All right. Now, well, now you did that with ease, man. And that's exactly what he's saying. A prudent man, a wise man, he foresee evil, he avoid it. A simple, just like I said, let me, let me put my hand in this nest around here and see what's in there. <laughs> right? You got it? Okay, then. You're good, man. So, therefore, it says here, prevention is better than cure. 
So just to simplify that text, prevention is better than cure. Huh? Now, some of us heard this, but what about Gary? Look at this. The fence or the ambulance. Give that bike to Gary. Not, not Gary, Gary. I'm sorry, excuse my southern accent, Gary. Gary, 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 Gary. What do you think that says? Fence or ambulance? Fence or ambulance? Which one is prevention? Which one is intervention? I guess the fence is, is, is prevention. Amen. Mm -hmm. put, put the mic up a little higher. No. I Sit. guess a fence is the prevention. Absolutely. And the ambulance is intervention. All right. So that fence prevents. Ambulance intervene. Emergency. So which one do you think we need? Fence or ambulance? The fence. Absolutely. So you all shop here. Now, in the book of Psalms, ex, ex, I'm sorry, Exodus 15, 26, it says, If thou wilt diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord thy God, and will do that which is right in his sight, and will give ear to his commandments, and keep all his statutes, I will put none of these diseases upon thee, which are brought upon the Egyptians, for I am the Lord thy God that healeth thee. Now, there's three conditions in this verse which we must meet in order for us to fulfill this promise. Three conditions. Anybody know what's the first condition up there? Hearken. Now what does hearken mean, Christian? Pay attention. Pay attention. To listen. What's the number two? Do. Huh? Do. All right, you do. It says, now let's go before you do. I said, let's go before you do. That, that's, that, now, that's another word right there before do. Wilt. What's that word wilt mean? You can consent. You, make, you have to listen. You have to decide. Will do. Decide to do. So, listen, choose, then act. Those are the three things. Will do. Then God said, I will put none of these diseases upon you that are brought upon the Egyptian. And you'll find those diseases in the book of, I believe, Deuteronomy 28. We did a study on those diseases. But God said, I'm the Lord that healed thee, or I'm the juice or the herbs or the plants that heal you. He said, I'm the one that does the healing. You see that up there? Can you see, George? You sure you want to get the front row? People sit in the front row to always get A's, man. <laughs> I'm telling you, those folks in the back row, boy, they be not those and all. But I see everything, man. I call him when you be going into that Z. Whoo. <laughs> All right. Brother teacher. Yes, sir. This is a question that maybe been asked in the past. So under no circumstances can a doctor heal you. Let's go back. Now, let me read that. Doctors under here now. Now, to those who understand the word of God, if there was no sin, bringing the law of God, if there was no sin ever committed, would there be cancer? No. Would there be AIDS? No. Diabetes? No. High blood pressure? No. Any disease? No disease. If there was no sin? Yeah. So then disease is the result of man just violating the law, whether willfully or ignorantly, Right. So now, physicians are trained, but they're not trained in understanding God's method. We'll see in a moment, they are trained to deal with symptoms. We'll see this. So, it says a physician, a Christian physician, understand the principle of God's word. He realized that Satan is the originator of disease. Hmm? Now you show me a doctor that, doctors, there's some who understand that. He doesn't understand that when he's dealing with cancer, he's not dealing with something natural. Men have violated, and we're going to see as we go on. So no. Have you found any doctors that heal disease? You'll find that they have abated, have abated disease. You understand? Know you know, people will take chemotherapy, et cetera, and they have remission of it. So no. 
because they're not operating on the principle that God has outlined to preserve these bodies. So let's see as we go on. Now, what does this say here? Proverbs 26, 2. The curse costs less should not come. So for the sake of time, that's simply being for every effect, there is a cause. That's what that means right there. For every effect, there's a cause. Now, in Job 29, 16 says, the cause which I knew not, I searched out. I have diabetes, so therefore I go to the endocrinologist. He's going to treat the symptoms of diabetes. I mean, diabetes type 2, diabetes type 1. We find diabetes type 1 is very hard to deal with, but we have seen several cases. But type 2, totally reversible, type 2. But they go to the doctor. They still, my sister, my sister's 100 years of age, 100. Not in good health, frail. Diabetic type, diabetic type 2, high blood pressure. She'd been here with us nine months. When she was not here, sitting in front of the TV, eating five meals a day. What a diabetes. She'd been in nine months. She only eat three, two good meals and one light meal. No medication. No blood pressure and no diabetes. What do you think about that? And she'd been treated for years with a doctor. Hello? And she ain't been into the health center. <laughs> She's just been loved and put on, as we instruct, put on a basic high fiber, good diet. She's 100 years of age. Now, she had an infection in her toe. Now, a diabetic, when they get gangrene, something like in the toe, it's all over with. That's right. So it started turning black, black, black. So my wife said, we got to get it there. We talked to a doctor, get it checked up. It was about two or three weeks ago, dear. They saw the toe, said, look, all right, we're going to give you something to take. In two weeks, if it's not down, we're going to amputate. She came home, and I say, we got on God's plan. So we began to apply God's plan, ozone to that toe, cast oil, et cetera, et cetera. In two weeks, took her back. The doctor said, I'm surprised. You don't need no amputation. Are you listening to me, man? Because I've seen too many people. Once they get to, that I work with people, once they get a toe cut, another toe, another toe, then the foot, then after the foot, then the, the ankle, I mean the, the thigh. I have seen it happen. Once you cut, you're going to keep cutting. Hmm? Does that answer your question? Yes. Yeah. So therefore, cause to effect. So we, tell, we understand what caused diabetes. Simple as that. We understand what caused everything. Why? Not because we're smart. Because the word of God tells us that. He gives us principles. Huh? Now, here's what takes place in disease. Sowing and reaping principles. Some of us know this. This is found in the book of Galatians 6, 7, 8. Now, those who know this, what's the first principle in sowing and reaping? You reap what you sow. You reap what you sow. The reaping is greater than the sowing. And then we find here, the reaping is greater than the sowing. And what's the third principle? The reaping is not immediate. Now, let's put this in real time in practicality. All right, say a person got diabetes. They just got it two years ago, one year ago. No, it's been sown for a period of time. If we don't understand lifestyle principle, either ignorantly or unwillfully, we're practicing poor dietary habit, et cetera, et cetera. All right, the reaping is greater than the sowing. So we find that whatever we sow is going to be greater, like here you're a gardener. You sow a kernel of corn, therefore you put it in the ground. One little seed is going to bring forth what? Ears of corn. All right? Then the reaping is not immediately cop. We find that once we put the corn in the ground, it's not going to come up tomorrow or the next day or either the next day after. It takes time. So we say, well, I just caught a cold. You didn't just catch a cold. You're creating a condition for that cold all along. Disease does not happen overnight, folk. Then when people call, they say, nah, I just got this, 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 this inflammation. I just, got, I just found out yesterday. Now, how can I get rid of it? Now, what they want to know, they want to get rid of it immediately. It doesn't happen that way. Now, here's our favorite de definition. Let's read this favor. Let me not move out the way because test you. All right, let's, let's recite this. This 
This is the most profound de definition of disease you can find in the medical records anywhere. Very simple. Hmm? Let's read it together. What does it say? Disease is <coughs> create a system, a condition. <coughs> All right, you got that? You see that, George? Sir. You ready? Let's read it again. One, two, three. Disease is an error of nature to free the system from a condition that results in violation of the laws of health. That's all for crime. Lips moving. I don't know. I don't, I, they're moving. <laughs> and I saw George get caught in the middle of the road. <laughs> All right, brother. It's all good. All good. <clears throat> now, look at that word. Look at that, 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 that para. Disease is an effort of nature. Look at the word. To do what? System. From condition that results from a violation of the laws of health. All right, let's put some. Let's say cancer. Cancer is an effort of nature <laughs> to free the system from conditions, condition that results from the violation of laws of health. So there have been conditions set in the body as a result of willfully or ignorantly violating the laws of health that has produced that disease. Diabetes, heart trouble, are efforts of nature. Now, as I go on, there's four things we need to do, but here's an example. Coughing, sneezing, running nose, fever. So when we are coughing, which are all of us are effort of nature, so the typical method would take a cough suppressant. Do you hear that? Cough suppressant. That word right there should just resonate in your brain. What does that name, that phrase, cough suppressant? It is, keep what down? Keep it down. Keep but, it down. But now, now we just read, so Brother Cos, that disease is an effort of nature. So when you take the cough suppressant, you are suppressing nature's effort to get rid of the encumbrance that's causing the cough. So you should cough it up. You should not take anything that's going to interfere with that process. That's Let right. it come up. The body is trying to expel it. Are you with me? All right. You take sneezing, runny nose, all the mucus being deposited out of your nose, and you just, it's just draining. So you take an antihistamine. So the antihistamine is going to interfere with the process of the body trying to get rid of the encumbrance. Fever. The body automatically will raise its temperature to deal with the onslaught of the foreign organism. So you don't want to put the fire out. You want to regulate the fire. You want to control the fire. You get what I'm saying? So you'll take baby aspirin, all kinds of aspirin, to, to interfere with the body immunity system, which is seeking to kill the bacteria, infection, or virus. So use hydrotherapy, things of nature. We got natural things. We got, God has given us a plethora, of, I mean, just a, a window of stuff here. So therefore, now, some of you know this. You know the first thing we should do in case of sickness? Number one, the first thing, Ari. All right, whoa, whoa, that pumpkin came back. Ascertain the cause, that's what you said. In case of sickness, the cause should be what? Ascertain. What does that mean? Ascertain. Huh? Determine what caused the problem. Then the next thing, number two, it says unhelpful condition should be changed. That's number two. Number three, wrong habits corrected. Number four, then nature is to be assisted. So what does that word then mean? After you do one, two, and three, then so we find here, ascertain the cause, change unhelpful condition, we correct wrong habits and assist nature. These are just in summary here. So we want to talk this evening briefly on one of the most important organs in the body, the physiology formula for good health, digestion. Elimination. We talked about seven channel elimination last time. What goes in must come out. So we're going to talk about digestion, physiology of digestion. Healthy cells make a healthy body. In Luke 16, 10, the Bible says, he that is faithful in that which is least will be faithful also in much. 
So when we take that principle and apply it to physiology, we find that the smallest unit of life are the cells. Cells produce, healthy cells produce a healthy body. So every sickness affects us at a cellular level. In order for us to overcome it, we got to strengthen the cells. So the health of the body is determined by the health of the cells. If the foundation be destroyed, what can the righteous do? So the foundation of the body are the cells. Cells make tissues, tissue make organs, organs form systems, and therefore we have a body. Very simple physiology, right here. This is the foundation of the body. Whatever sickness we have in any organ or system, we trace it all the way back to the cells. Elementary, cells, the body system, cell, tissue, organ, system, foundation. All right, here are the five needs. Every cell needs oxygen. Without oxygen, cells will die in minutes. There's one thing we deal with a viral infection like cancer, anything of this nature, cancer cells cannot live in an oxygenated environment. They're what you call anaerobic. They exist on low oxygen. That's why you got to improve the oxygen. Same way when you deal with COVID-19, you got to improve oxygen. Cells need water. Without water, they would die in several days. Dehydration produces inflammation. And we find that when the body is dehydrated, then God has built it within the body compensation mechanism. The body will take water from the blood, from the brain, from the liver, from the skin, from the lungs. It will take water from those areas. And your brain is over 80% water. And so if, if you deprive of that water in the brain, you lose all sense of cognitivity. Cells need nutrients. Well, good food. I'm not talking about any nutrients. According to God's plan, a plant-based diet, they would die in several weeks. If the cells are being, are being accumulated with their own waste, not being eliminated out of the channels of, channel of elimination, they would die in hours. And freedom from poison, cigarettes, alcohol, you name it, they would die prematurely. These are five needs of all of our cells. Fundamental, very fundamental. Healthy cells. All right? The life of the flesh is in the blood. The blood is the lifeline. Every cell depends on the ministry of the blood. Good blood will produce good health. Notice this statement from Ministry of Healing, page 271. In order to have good health, we must have good blood. For the blood is the current of life. It removes waste and nourish the body. So the blood has two principles, nourish and cleanse. When supplied with the proper food element, now notice what it said, proper food elements. And when cleansed and vitalized by contact with pure air, it carries life and vigor to every part of the system. The more perfect the circulation, the better will this work be accomplished. So, formula, good food and drink plus good digestion plus good elimination, I talked about this week, at, week before last, equal pre your blood. Good health, spiritual, mental, physical. So digestion, processing, waste, elimination, blood, gonna be pure, gonna be pure. Saw so a health feature on the blood. It's come from, I uh, can't pronounce that wonderful name, David. DVR. Say it again. Okay. The blood moving slowly and sticking together. What causes this and how one knows and treat? What causes the blood to stick together is number one, fatty foods. Foods high in cholesterol. Meat products. Dairy. Dairy. Cholesterol food. Eggs, cheese, milk. The blood runs in a single file. We're talking about the blood will move through your arteries at a speed of over 45 miles an hour. And therefore, if we put all of our blood cell arteries in a straight line, it will go around the earth equator three times. That's in your body. And the blood is traveling. Now, blood carries oxygen. The blood is round. It carries oxygen molecule on the outside. 
So when, when the blood is going in a straight line, when it sticks together, it decreases the oxygen content in your body. So the type of foods we're eating definitely would cause that situation. You say how to treat it is simply follow the laws of health. If you're eating dairy products, cheese, and even sugar, go back to those eight laws of health and say, you know, grace and Lord, I see, just re release that stuff. Take it out of your refrigerator. That's what I did years ago. The stuff that I knew I loved to eat, and I found out because it did something for me. That's why I loved it. I took it out of my refrigerator. I remember when I got rid of all meat, threw it out to my dogs and gave it to the dogs. Get rid of it. That's what caused that problem. New wine, old bottles. Now, this comes from a book some of us are familiar with, Council of Dyes and Food. Listen to what it says. It says, respect paid to the proper treatment of the stomach. Stomach. Will be rewarded in clearness of thought and strength of mind. Your digested organs will not, prematurely, will not be prematurely worn out to testify against you. We are to show that we appreciate our God-given intelligence by eating, studying, and working wisely. Now notice this. Look at this word right here. A sacred duty devolves upon us to keep the body in such a state that we shall have a sweet, clean breath. Did you get that? Sacred duty. Because when the breath is not sweet, they let you know stuff has fermented in the body. We are to appreciate the light. That means wisdom God has given us even now on health reform by word and practice, reflecting clear light to others upon this subject. A sacred duty to take care of this stomach. Yes. So, Brother Teacher? Yeah. Bad, bad breath comes from Bad eating and things that's in your stomach? It comes from food that's not properly digested, that has fermented in your stomach. The body becomes so acidic. That's what it is. Then you're not having adequate bowel movement. All that stuff is recycled into the blood, into every organ in your body, most definitely. Yeah. So when you're talking, it comes up through your breath? Most definitely. What do you think you should do about that? Take some Listerine? <laughs> that's all the problem. You think so? L L Listerine. 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 Or maybe get some Tom's natural stuff. Mouthwash. Peppermint. Peppermint, yes. I suck on some peppermint candy. What do you think? Will that solve the problem? No. No, that's no. just going to deal with the symptoms. You got to deal with the digestion. Hello out there, huh? If men and women would only remember how greatly they afflict the soul when they afflict the stomach. <laughs> And how deeply, listen to this, Carl, and how deeply Christ is dishonored when the stomach is abused because there's a direct relationship between the stomach and this brain. That's why. They would be brave and self-denying, giving the stomach opportunity to recover its healthy action. While sitting at the table, we may do medical missionary work by eating and drinking to the glory of God. 1 Corinthians 10, 31. Question. So, um, alluding to what my brother over there has said, um, so when you wake up, oh, when you wake up early in the morning and you have bad breath. Dragon breath. Dragon oh. breath. <laughs> um, is that the same cause from the fermentation overnight? Almost definitely. Sleeping, depending on what you've finished eating, the night before? It's not necessarily what you said the night before. It's what's been accumulating over days. The Galatian, the reaping and sowing principle. And, and what you ate the night before just maybe add on to it if it's not been properly digested. But that's accumulation over a period of time. Hmm? What do you do for E. coli infection in the blood vessels, natural remedies? First of all, when you got an infection in the blood, well, it's E. coli, any bacteria, you have to cleanse the blood. And again, uh, what I would suggest you do, just to simple, get you started, we have a free handout that you go to our website, resource, click on resources, right? 
click on resources. Click on resource. Because I'm not going to give you no prescription over the, over the air. You might want to call the police on me. <laughs> but you just go to our website. You can fill out one of our health and nutrition evaluation. And we will respond to it. In the meantime, you see this book here? God's Plan Rx, a little package. It's a free download. This will get you started. And then if you want further information, therefore, you go to our website. You look up health and nutrition evaluation. Send that in. We will look at it. Contact you with a plan. So you understand that it would not be appropriate for me to give you any step-by-step -step information online. Okay? God's own. Now, if you're God's own, I'm God's own. We don't want God program to go wrong. Okay? All right. Very good. Thank you. Let's move on. Often this intemperance is felt at once in the form of headache, indigestion, and colic. A load has been placed upon the stomach that it cannot care for, and a feeling of oppression comes. The head is confused. The stomach is in rebellion. But these results do not always follow overeating. In some cases, the stomach is paralyzed. Do you know what I mean by paralyzed? It's not function problem because we have abused it over a period of time. We're eating, and therefore we're not getting the full benefit of the foods we're eating because the stomach is not producing enough hydrochloric acid, etc. Exercise is good for the blood. Yes, indeed. I have, good I have good motivation for about three to four months, and then I lose it. How do I keep that motivation? Number one, you choose, and secondly, you have to go to God. God said in John 15, 5, without me, you can do nothing. So do not get discouraged. If you're on the track, your setback is nothing but a setup for a comeback. You go to God, just confess it, Lord, I need your grace. Get back in the race. Okay? Okay, what do I do with small pox, monkey pox? I said God's own. Write me. Get this package. I know you wait on me to give you a specific. I cannot give you a specific, and I will not give you a specific, but I will give it to you. You contact us by filling out our health and nutrition evaluation. Thank you, God's own. All right. Psalms 11.3, if the foundation be destroyed, what can the righteous do? New wine, which equal good food. Old body bottles equal sickly bodies. So you cannot put new wine in old bodies. You cannot put good food in sickly bodies. You got to deal with both cases. Uh -huh. Brother teacher. Yes, sir. Listen, I'm listening to you very carefully. But what I'm hearing there is, and I see it happen so many times, when we have a problem, we try to look for a specific way to solve the problem or some kind of a diet or some kind of advice and whatnot. But when I look at what you're hearing, what you're saying there, it really is just a way of living. Mm -hmm. It's a lifestyle. Absolutely. Because even when you get on a diet, you're fat, you get thin, then you get fat again, then you get thin again, you get fat again, you get thin again. But if you just stay on the lifestyle, the lifestyle. and live like that, the body will bring itself to the proper weight and you'll continue eating, you'll be all right. The body is designed by the creator to preserve itself. That's so why we got an immune system. The immune system is the body, inter internal body God. It protects us. Digestion. We got all these systems, and God said it's lifestyle. Even though you might not understand the physiology, the anatomy, but get on these laws of health. Simple. In Psalms 119, 103, it says, Thy words were found, and I did eat them. Spiritual and physical application. Now, coming down to the last part, let's look at digestion. Digestion is the conversion of large food stuff into units small enough to be used by the what? Cell. Cell's the foundation. The starches become glucose. Fats become fatty acids. <clears throat> Proteins become amino acids. The blood then picks up these substances from the intestines absorption. All right? It's a process. And all and those things that some of you all learning in my in, in the nutritional class. You have starches, you got fatty acids, you got pro 
I mean fats and protein. All this is converted into a substance that the blood picks up. Now, our bodies are built up from the food we eat. There's a constant breaking down of the tissues of the body. Every movement of every organ involves waste, and this waste is repaired from our food. That means we're eliminating toxins, et cetera, that we eat to repair this process. Each organ of the body requires a share of nutrition. The brain must be supplied with its portion, bones, muscles, nerves. Now notice this, it is a wonderful process that transforms the food into what? Blood. And use this blood to build up the very parts of the body. The life of the flesh is in the blood. But this process is going on continually, supplying with life and strength each nerve, muscle, and tissue. This comes from a book that even our health guests are reading, Ministry of Healing. So, therefore, food, digesting, converting the process. You are what you digest. People say you are what you eat, but if it doesn't digest, you're not. <laughs> Did you get that? You are what you digest. Now, here are what we call the five food labs. Now, this is the foundation how we choose the type of foods and how to combine food. The five food labs. The mouth, now, what, what we're talking about, this is what you call the chemistry makeup, acid and alkaline. It, it talks about the pH, the potency of hydrogen. Your body is probably close to 70% alkaline. Your blood is alkaline, not acid. Your blood is alkaline. So in order to maintain a proper pH, at least 6.5 to 7, and when you get lab work and et cetera, they, they check all of that. But if your blood tilts to the downward sides, it creates a condition for bacteria, any foreign organism to build up to. So first of all, the mouth, alkaline. You produce that alkaline substance. The stomach is acid, produce an acid we'll talk about later on. Small intestine is alkaline, the liver is alkaline. The colon is acid. So you see alkaline acid, alkaline acid, because the liver and intestine work together. If your body was all alkaline, you would not survive. If it's all acid, you would die. So there got to be a, a chemical balance within the bloodstream, a chemical balance. That is maintained through those eight laws of health. Stress can produce a very acidic, toxic bloodstream, stress. Your diet, lack of exercise, lack of sleep, all those things play a part along with foods. You get what I'm saying? Along with food. So now... It takes one to five minutes in your mouth to go through the digestion process. The alkaline substance uh, begins to saliva mixed with the food. You chewing, chew, chew. That's why chewing, that's why when I go to lunch, I'm going to I'm have to get my own private room so nobody be talking to me. Because when you're talking and sitting at the table, it doesn't work, does it? Are, I know. You, are you saying when you're eating, you must not talk? That's what it sounds like. You know how you said at the table and you're over there with those folks? Those folks? Then those folks come <laughs> up to my table. Yeah, I will have to have my meal taken out. <laughs> but anyway, I like the company. I do like the company. <laughs> but if, it, if this is just, you know, just maybe every now and then, a few words, but we get in a deep conversation. That really affects your digestion, I'm telling you. When I finish eating, talking to the folks, I'm tired. <laughs> I'm serious. Had a good meal, but no, you got to chew. You cannot chew with your mouth open. And you have to, you know, you have to, I think my wife probably brought it in her class. You must, isn't this? You must drink your food and chew your liquor. Liquid, li liquor. <laughs> Excuse me. That's right. But they do. And wine, you know how they taste the wine, they let it slaver in the mouth. You must drink your food. What, it mean, what does it mean by drinking your food? You must be fully masticated. Fully masticated to liquid. Fully liquefied it in your as, mouth. As it goes down the esophagus. Then it goes to the stomach 
where it now spends at least four and a half to five hours in the stomach going through the whole acid process, hydrochloric acid. After four and a half hours of five, it is dumped into the small intestine where the alkaline substance. That's seven and a half hours. Then after that, then it kicks it off into the large intestine. That's another 12 hours. You add all that up, it's 24 hours. From the time you ingest, eliminate, it's a 24-hour cycle. Brother, that, teacher, oh. brother teacher, is it safe to say that after every meal, you should go to the bathroom? Yeah, it's safe to say that. Yeah. Go, go, one goes in, one goes out. That's one right. goes in, one goes out. So <laughs> after every meal, you should go to the bathroom. Yeah. If you're having three bowel movements, I three mean three meals, meals a day. Three times. Three times a day, you can need, need to have three bowel movements. So if you're eating three meals a day and having one bowel movement, that's two bowel movements times seven, that's 14 bowel movements a week you have not had. Continue to multiply that by 30. Multiply by 365 days out of a year, how many bowel movements you have not had and where all that toxic waste go into your bloodstream. Then when you go to the doctor with any problem, they don't see that. I remember when we was in Quebec and there was a dear sister end up with chronic high blood pressure. They rushed her to the hospital. We went to visit her and therefore they just, they medicated her but never got to the cause. And I told her the fact is that a that her bowels are not moving properly. And I asked her, I said, how many bowel moves you have a day? Now she probably had maybe, maybe one, or once or twice a week. That's right. And so when I was there talking with her, they, they, they brought her meal into the, into, the hot, into the room. And I looked on there, they had the mashed potatoes. You know, that's all right. Bread, starch, meat, all kinds of starchy food that's not good for the digestive system. So they could not regulate it. So they got it under control, sent it out. So we went to visit her and told her, I said, now, you're going to have to get your bowels moving. And we're going to assist you. Once she got her bowels moving, her blood pressure went to normal. You understand that? That's just one aspect. These situations are very interesting. 24 hours. Now, I want to go back. I don't think I have it on here. Now, when they took the transit time of countries, Australia, Africa, and America. And I think in Australia, it was something like 40, 48 hours. In Africa, it was 36 hours. Remember, it's 24 hours, all right? So Africa had 36 hours, and Australia had 40 hours. You know what the transit time in America was? 72 hours. Hmm? That's three days. That's why a lot of your commercials on, on x lax and all the bowel stuff. I'm serious. America is constipated because of fast food. Oh, get back on track. How do you train your body to have BM at the every meal? My brother, after you eat, go walk, exercise, and go to that toilet and sit on it. And don't have your cell phone or the computer and massage. If nothing come out, you train that bowel movement. It going to work like clockwork. Walk after every meal. 72 hours, 24 hours, constipation. Now, autoimmune or immune system is fighting out bacteria. These are some of the things the immune system deal with. Medication, virus. But there's something called leaky gut syndrome. Anybody heard of leaky gut syndrome? Leaky gut syndrome is simply that, you remember, the stomach is an acid environment and you have a mucous membrane lining and it becomes permeable. That means the lining begins to have large pores, holes in it. And when you, dig when you eat protein food under digest, it passes through those pores into the bloodstream. And the immune system recognizes it. It's going to recognize it as a foreign option. It's going to begin to secrete histamine. It's going to deteriorate the lining of your stomach. That's what you call leaky gut syndrome. So when you go to the doctor, they give you medication for it. Hmm? Now, I'm going to share something with you. What caused leaky gut real quick and as we come to a close. Now, we find leaky gut syndrome is a gastrointestinal disorder 
which the intestinal lining of the digestive tract become more permeable or leaky. That means more proteins leaking through your gut than normal due to repeated irritation. Re irritation. The small intestine is designed to allow tiny particles of digested nutrients to pass through its wall and into the bloodstream if the stomach or the body is operating properly and breaking down the food. Huh? Starches are broken down in the mouth. Protein is broken down in the stomach. Fats into the small intestine. So it says these, these are then distributed for use throughout the body. But due to a variety of causes, the intestine wall become more permeable and allow larger, less digested particles and toxin to pass through when we're not breaking down digestion, causing leaky gut syndrome. The body then recognizes these particles as foreign invaders, and the immune system attempts to fight them off, which can set the stage for various other autoimmune disorders. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Um, uh, so, if I may ask, what is a, uh, you're sitting, you're eating your lunch, breakfast, whatever the case may be, and so I'd like to know, and maybe I, I've heard it, but didn't, it didn't quite register, um, so about what are we talking as far as time sitting and enjoying your food? Can I say maybe 15, 10 to 15 minutes? based on whatever meal that you're eating? Time more. Well, you know, because then <clears throat> I hear it has to be liquefied. Right, chew and chew it. Yeah, yeah, chew, yeah, chew, 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 chew. At least 27 times I'm here, you know. Well, you, you know, many times come with numbers, but you need to chew. Chewing not only helps to liquefy, but it activates peristalsis. Mm -hmm. I mean, it activates your digestive system, chewing, chewing, chewing. And so one can say, you don't take no hour to chew food, you know, Instead, you, unless you put about five tablespoons at one time in your mouth, boy, food, chew, chew, chew. Now, if you're talking, like I've been disturbed and talking, <laughs> it, it's going to take me an hour. It don't take them about 10 to 15 minutes to chew the food. Are you with me? Yes, sir. And so by chewing, you're talking about no more than less than an hour. You should finish your meal. So, brother, teacher, please, we should chew the food that it becomes like baby food. Most definitely. <laughs> Absolutely. You buy, mm, mm, your stomach do not have teeth. So chew it like baby food to baby food. Come mushy. Consistency. Now, this is, now, when I say mush, then, then one say, oh, see, that's why I give you cream of wheat. That's not what. It's going to bypass the chewing process. Now, I'm not going to say you shouldn't eat cream of wheat, but I'm saying that is not the best meal, which... People know when they have cream and wheat, Dr. Jackson boycotts. What? That's what, yeah, I had to put some granola in it to chew. Uh, 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 uh. Praise God. <laughs> I'm just letting the folks know. You got to have food, you're going to chew, man. You got to chew. God gave you teeth to chew. You got to chew to increase peristalsis. You got to chew to improve digestion. You got to chew. Most black families eating together are quiet during the meal time. I don't know what family you into. <laughs> <laughs> I ain't never met one. Uh, Pam, Pam, I, I need to have some black folk. <laughs> I mean, no, no. It's where, whereas Caucasian families have conversation during the meal. No. Just my observation. <sighs> no. Okay, bless your heart. I need to find those folk. <laughs> Pam, come to meet ministry. Did they say black folks are quiet during meal? Is that what I'm reading right? Yeah, most black family eating together. Something's wrong with your family. Come on, Pam. I need it. That's that's interesting. Maybe meet ministry family is an exception. What do you think, Carl? Yeah. I don't think so. It's good. Tell me, man. We we have a lot to talk about, man. Tell me. That's what it is. Maybe the Holy Ghost is on us. But I appreciate that. And the chewing helps to strengthen the jaw. Oh, most definitely. And the, and the teeth. teeth. You be true to your teeth, and they won't be false to you. <laughs> I got a couple missing, but I'm doing all right. 
Do you get that, George? <laughs> All right. Intestinal permeability. You see where there's an intestinal here? That's where there's opening, more opening. And that's why large particles can pass through this mucous membrane lining. Uh -huh. Leaky gut syndrome. Bacteria growth in this area. There's bacteria as a result of leaky gut. Now notice up here it says hydrochloric acid deficiency. Your stomach is designed to produce hydrochloric acid. Pastor Adam, I am blessed to have the opportunity to join you. Thank God Almighty. Thank you, my brother. Thank you very much. I pray that this information will be a blessing to you all. And remember this. Your body, your stomach produces hydrochloric acid in order to carry out the process. So that means there's a hydrochloric acid deficiency in your body, in your stomach. That's causing this leaky gut syndrome, all right? Now, then also these various drugs, I have, like, all these different drugs will produce this leaky gut syndrome. Dairy, gluten, bacteria, protein, parasite, parasite. You know, when we cleanse, that's why I, some of the other ministers said, why do you all put your health guests on fast and cleanse? Because we got three principles. We got, number one, you got to cleanse, build, and maintain. You cannot put new wine in old bottles. You got to produce good bottles. So we find here in the gut. Now, hydrochloric acid deficiency. Now, I know you want to copy this. I can always print this out. There's 27 causes of hydrochloric acid deficiency. Number one, eating meals too fast. No chewing. Overeating. Meals too close together. They need to be five hours apart. Eating late at night, past six or seven o'clock, because your body does not process that food. Your stomach is resting. <clears throat> Eating when you're tired. The best thing to get some rest than to eat when you're tired because your body does not have enough energy to metabolize. Loss of sleep. Oh, number five, eating between meals, you know, all day long, you know. Uh, when my sister, when she came here, uh, she was eating five, six meals a day just to maintain a diabetes. But now she only eat three meals a day and no diabetes. Brother teacher, where does the snack come in there? Where does it come in there? Eating between meals. Eating between meals, snacking. That will reduce your hydrochloric acid. Because you're eating, you're not giving your stomach time to rest to regenerate. So is there's no such thing as a snack? No. Not, not in God's, not in God's economy. No. <laughs> what's, the, what, what's that? Okay. Number nine, depression would affect your digestion. Unripe fruit, spoiled food, condiments such as black pepper, hot sauce, those type of things. Bread not well done. You heard about inspiration talking about that bread that was not done right. They threw it out to the pig and killed the pig. <laughs> Yeah, we used to run a bakery and bread well done. It's, it's sour, it ferment. These are things that cause this that leaky gut because it's 27 calls of hydrochloric acid deficiency. Fresh bread, you know, especially when you're talking about yeast, you need to give it 24 hours for that yeast to die. You know, when that bread come out that oven, that yeast right, mm, doesn't smell good, you just want to put your, mm, you just want to put your teeth to it and let your stomach become rotten. That's what you want to do. Vinegar, highly acid. Now, in the so-called health world, they tout in vinegar for everything. Use lemon, fresh squeezed lemon instead of vinegar because it's very acidic. Fried foods, complex mixture. Somebody tell me, what is complex mixtures? Complex mixtures. Vegetables and fruit. No, that's not it yet. No. no. Complex mixture. Wait a minute. I am blessed to have the opportunity to join you. Thank God Almighty. Thank you, Pastor Adam. Potluck. That's Pot right. Love. Eat everything that's on the table. Mm. My, too late. Too late. <laughs> so complex meals. Say you have table spread with different varieties of things. You might have pasta. You might have a rash, rice dish over here. You might have a casserole over here. Baked mac over here. All salads, breads, everything. You know what I'm saying? 
then, then yeah, well, sometimes we have Thanksgiving every day. So you get your plate, so you get a little bit of everything. That's what it's talking about. Yeah, but, but Brother Teacher, why put them there? Well, I agree with you. You're supposed to take that as a choice. Well, listen to this question. Now, if the person is definitely conscious about your health, <laughs> all right, but anyway, that's a good question. Why? You know, it shouldn't be. We, we, we want to help one another. So let me move on. All right. Too much sugar. Oh, no. Combination of milk and sugar. A combination of cow milk and sugar produce alcohol in the body. It ferments. Uh, tea, caffeine, with, with, with uh, the caffeine, cocoa, cocoa. Uh, you, you have what you call theobromine in cocoa. Uh, I in theobromine. Those things help to uh, suppress the hydrochloric acid. Bro too, too much, let me say, too much liquid food. So I go back to my cream of wheat. So it's all right for you to eat cream of wheat, but too much of liquid food. Cream of wheat is not liquid. It is liquid. You it's don't, not. you just say, <laughs> you know, chew, chew, it. chew it. Right. Liquid means like that it's, it's. If the food good. really tastes good, you don't hear anyone talking because talking they're too busy chewing. My brother, Mark, our food always tastes good. And therefore, when our table is loaded with folks, it's good conversation, good food. We just have to practice temperance. Thank you for your comment. I know you. Brother Teacher, you mentioned something there about I gotta get, milk. I got to quit pretty soon. Come on now. Milk and sugar. Milk and sugar. And you said, um, you said cow's milk or something like that. Cow milk and sugar combined together produce alcohol. Because so what about nut milk? Nut milk is good. Nut milk, not, you don't eat no sugar with nut milk. Right, but no. the cow's milk, dairy. Yeah, but dairy nut milk, product. you don't have to put nothing in the nut milk. Almond milk, stuff like that, no. Okay. Soft drinks, we know there's acid in the soft drink, Coca-Cola, those type of things. What about chewing gum, which I used to be a chewing gum pro. Chewing gum, my wife used to like chewing gum. I see it on her face. Chewing gum. What do you think about chewing? How does chewing gum affect digestion? Well, well, when you chew, when you chew, the stomach expects something to come Most down. Most definitely, you secrete. Now but you are, nothing comes down. Now you but saliva. Spread. That's right. You're and producing then the juice That's right. to receive. Now the stomach is waiting. <laughs> nothing coming down. Then hydrochloric acid being secreted all over. All over, and nothing there for it to work on. Now it's going to work on your stomach. You're going to cut it up. That's right. Absolutely. You got a comment there? No, no. Okay, she doesn't. It's good? All right. Loss of minerals when you lose like potassium, calcium, you know, mineral deficiency can also affect hydrochloric acid. Aluminum, how does that affect them? Cooking in aluminum pots. We learned that. Because it draw. Who, who, who knows that? We learned that. Oh, yeah, you learned in class. But it draws aluminum to the body. You 20? skip one. What did I skip? You skip uh, this drink, 23 drinking with the meals. I, did I talk about that? I, don't, I didn't hear that. All right, what about drinking with meals, y'all? What y'all think? What does that do to the body? Understand the physiology. Dilute. We had a, yeah, we had a conversation. It dilutes the digestion. Oh, it dilutes the digestion. Get Dr. Mike. Yeah, get, Dr. get Dr. Mike. Oh, all right, doctor. <laughs> we had a conversation with LeBron Jackson. <laughs> It wasn't drinking with the meals. Doc, it Doc. Eating, it was eating watermelon. Time out. <laughs> get that mic. Get that mic from Doc. <laughs> don't, 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 don't give me. Get it. Right, Doc. Thank you. Great Liquids, they dilute the digestive juices. That's right. It sure does. You see, we have great fun here. You all right? Thank what, you, Doc. What, quickly, I heard watermelon. <laughs> I heard the word watermelon. Mm -hmm. The servant of the Lord says watermelon should be eaten alone and not at all. I, then what I want you to do? Do me a favor. Do me a favor. I want you to get that reference. Yeah, I, want I you will. To, uh, yeah. Get, I know it, and pass it on to. Watermelon should no, 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 be no. eaten alone and not at all. Uh, we heard you. Get the reference. I want to see. Okay. All right, that's right. That's right. Give me those mics. Because of his get, liquid give content. Give, give me the mic. But you're giving the mic to the wrong. You're giving the mic to the wrong people. 
You're just supposed to be helping the uh, Look, this is my show. <laughs> no, 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 man. No. Okay. What are your thoughts on nut oat milk dates to sweet? Well, you can use dating. It's not, it does not act like sugar. Sugar, white sugar, robs the body of B vitamins, which is necessary for digestion. It robs the body of calcium, iron, potassium. The host going on, it lowers your immune system. White sugar. White sugar. Very good. We're almost there. I'm going to hold this mic for a while. No, let me hold it. I'll choose the one I want to ask the questions. <laughs> Eat breakfast like a king, lunch like a prince, and supper like a pauper. What does that mean? Huh? Breakfast like a king or a queen, lunch, prince, or princess, and supper should be the lightest meal. Lightest meal. All right? One third. Explain what? Yeah. I will explain it in a moment. Okay? Then I'll turn the mic over to you because you can explain it. No, no controversy. <laughs> what the, we gain one third of one half our calories in the morning time. Jump start your day with breakfast. We find the gain breakfast delivered. Most skippers never. We gain 0.68% of folded. Vitamin A, vitamin C, fiber, iron, vitamin E, calcium. I'm not talking about a smoothie. That's not a breakfast. No. Let me continue this because <laughs> breakfast, you need food. Now, for those who need some instruction, since you're working, read this. This right here, little package, tells you what you sh how you should eat breakfast, your lunch, and your evening meal. All in here, tell you why. Also tell you how to balance it all. Is that all right? We we're here to resource. That's why we don't want our friends on streamline streaming just get this information. We're gonna put some in their hand. So I encourage you to read it. Okay. Now, when we jump start with a good breakfast, our sugar level gonna go. Within five hours, that sugar level start dropping. That's lunchtime. It's cane sugar contraindicated. We find cane sugar, if you are getting sugar cane and grinded and, and, and not going through the process, you have depleted, but you depleted some nutrients, but it's not like the white processed sugar. So very moderate. So that means that time breakfast, <coughs> your sugar level goes up. Now, if you, Driving, I shouldn't even, I'm sorry if they might want to sue me on this, but anyway, if you eat, if that's your breakfast, you're going to shoot up and sh come down within an hour. Why? Empty calories. Empty and no fiber. Fiber maintain that blood sugar level. There's no fiber in that, period. Why do people skip breakfast? No time. Mm. Mostly no time. They busy about everything else, but not their health. Suppose they just want to fast. Well, that's one thing, but well, <laughs> I'm not gonna give her the mic. Some eat their vegetable at breakfast, as vegetable take long to digest. No problem. It's not wrong. I mean, you can switch. You have to. Have, those who are sedentary workers, you go to work, sit at a desk. It's best not to eat beans and potatoes in the morning when you're going to just sit at a desk. Are you understand what I'm saying? Now, if you're going out there and going to be working like you work, et cetera, in the farm garden, then you can have your vegetables. Is that what, what if the smoothie contains greens and nuts with berries? Yeah. <laughs> Yvonne, thank you for your question. No fiber. All you do is you're going to drink it, pull down its esophagus into the stomach, dump it out. No activation of any enzyme. It's just going to raise your blood sugar up for the time being. Smoothies are not breakfast. Do it for your third meal. Now, Smoothies don't fit into the scenario of eating like a king. You don't see no kings eating no smoothies. <laughs> Breakfast. Be imaginative. Huh? 
less chronic disease, increased longevity, better health. We find breakfast skippers two to, two to five times that of breakfast eaters. Talk about their clotting formula. Breakfast skippers has two and a half times that of breakfast eaters. Clotting formula of the blood. That's why breakfast is so important. Skipping breakfast to lose weight. Throws out the body metabolism. Learning disabilities. School-aged children, and I know this to be true, that skip breakfast experience learning disability. Uh, the brain does not store protein. It stores glucose. Glucose, blood sugar. So, any questions? Closing question as we go to our lab over here. Any questions? He, he has a mic. No, he don't. No, he doesn't. He's taking the mic from him. Him and I. So if you want to skip a meal, it shouldn't be breakfast. Not really. Unless you want a, a fasting for a special reason. Reason. Yeah. Okay. Fasting for a special reason. And breakfast... Um, there are two types of meals, sweet and savory. B your breakfast should be savory or sweet? It, you mean like, to my, like grains, cereals, like, like in the morning? And or and vegetables. And yam and it, 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 ground provision. Well, did you hear him? Yeah, I heard bread. him. <laughs> she don't need the mic. I heard him. It depends on your occupation, Carl. <laughs> occupation. If you're out there working hard on the grounds, building, et cetera, you might need a savory breakfast. Okay. Yeah. Depends on your occupation. All right? Living healthy without being wealthy, affordable health care plan. So therefore, heredity loads the gun, but lifestyle pulls the trigger. As Carl said, lifestyle. Health is a treasure. These eight precious laws. So we must choose to be healthy. Make healthy choices, but the most important thing, you need the power of God like it was brought out this morning. What if you put oatmeal it's your smoothie. Yeah, I, I love it. Let me, very helpful. Thank you, Dr. Jess. Can I ask my friends out there, what, about, what is about smoothies that you all are so excited? I like smoothies too. I'm going to make a nice one over here. But it's not for breakfast. Not for breakfast. I'm not anti-smoothie. I want you to have a good breakfast, good lunch, and make smoothie your third meal if you like it, please. It does not follow the principles of physiology. You need fiber to regulate your blood sugar. Yeah, see, here, if the food, it's just like when, you know, like with babies, you know, something you chew it and give it to the baby. Because to get the baby, because their digestive system is not functioning properly. Mm -hmm. Now, do you chew your food and give it to Elias and Andre? <laughs> All right then. <laughs> <laughs> Hello. So if you have a problem with your So if you have a problem with your digestion, okay. is it okay to do that? Well, the smoothie. If you have a problem with digestion, mm -hmm. you need to get that digestion in a recovery mode. Mm -hmm. Yes, you might have to do that. Okay. A proper smoothie, proper, mm -hmm. that's going to nourish the body. Exactly. Yes, but then it's not going to last long. Mm -hmm. The smoothie go out the door as your digestion improves. You gradually introduce solid food one by one. Okay. You get what I'm saying? Yes. Is that right? Yeah, that's good. Okay. okay. All right. Yes, ma'am. I'm listening. What if you do fruit and nuts and nothing else for breakfast? Again, it, it definitely is not a breakfast. It's your choice. Fruit and nuts. It doesn't fit the breakfast menu. Huh? So therefore, you can sweet. A lot of protein. Now remember, we need fiber. I'm going to, you see that God's pharmacy there? All right. Who know how to run a blender? Carrie, you know how to run a blender? I know she know how to run. You know how to run a blender there? 
Come on up here, dear. You don't mind, do you? Huh? She says she kind of minds. I know. She, she laying back. This woman's skill. No, she ain't not going to talk. Come on around here, my dear. No. Put oh, some... so now I'm on keep. Okay. <laughs> I don't have my glasses on. Okay. You got, go ahead. Put your glasses on. Block that door. <laughs> Block that door. I don't want to run out of here. Come on, Carrie. I said. I should. Put those gloves on. Let's see. He said smoothies aren't eating like a king. So we have to eat the oatmeal by itself. Along with the bears. <laughs> yes, ma'am. Oh, uh, it, it said up here that I said, he said smoothies aren't eating like a king. So we have to eat the oatmeal by itself along with the berries and the nuts. Lots of laugh, LOL. Is that lots of, or lots of love? You ever run one of these? Not that. Oh. That's why I was looking. I have never run a blender yep. before. You have a blender? What you have? What you got? Uh, several types. Several. Mm -hmm. But not this brand. How many? How many you have? I have three. Three. Mm -hmm. Very costly. Okay. I tell you Moderately what. So. Trade all three of those in and get them blit tech. Okay. Nah. Uh, now she needs because she, she she need one. She says she got three, but Mike, please. She said she got three, three, three uh, blenders, and I said they're costly. I got a mic. She said, yeah. So I told her to sell those three blenders and get a blend tech. I'm serious. Okay. Even, uh, even this is better than a Vitamix. The only thing a Vitamix has on it, because you know, you can, I guess, soups and stuff like this, but this is a very good blender. Okay, here we are. We're going to do. Where is Dr. It? Jackson? Yes, ma'am. <clears throat> Before we begin, um, so we're to meet people where they're at for yes, what they have. Yes, ma'am. And I just wanted to understand and confirm that, right? Yes, ma'am. So if they don't have all those nutritional, um, I guess, products or uh, items that they need, you meet them where they're at most and definitely. Then help move them along. I agree with that. Now, what we have on the table here, so the people know, We'll see in a moment. Let me put it on the screen here. All right, we're going to make the Daniel's Dip. reason I call this the Daniel's Dip, we have a 10-day Daniel Bizarre program. And this was during a time of fast. But Daniel Dip, D-I-P, stands for digestion, inflammation, and pain. All the ingredients, the bromelain, the pineapple, the papaya, the papaya, we got mango. All these ingredients help to increase blood pressure, also deal with inflammation. Then we got ginger in here. This is why I call it the Daniel Dip. Now, if you're diabetic, it might be too sweet for some to, to take. So we're going to make this Daniel Dip. You see what I'm right? All right. Now, we have everything already peeled, my dear. And, well, the apples went well. Just, no, let's throw them. They should have been chopped up. Just throw that. No, no, just dump it in there. Just dump it in there. All right, set that aside. Apples. Apples. Those are. <laughs> pick, pick, take one out. Hold it. Apple. <laughs> Yellow apple. Okay. All right, what else you got here, my dear? Mango. <laughs> you got gloves on, just get it out of your finger. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, yeah. Aha. Uh -huh. Papaya. Papaya. Wait, wait, wait. Is that more than what you Yeah, mean? it's a lot. <laughs> oh, God. Did you mention it? Uh, how much? It's not going to hurt. A big one? It's not going to hurt. I, I, I'm li quick to listen, slow to speak. Put your hands, put a little bit in there. Because we got, we got two doctors in here. Put some more pie up. Put, put it on in there. We're good. We're good. Yeah. Well, 
Actually, it's not a half, just like she said. A little more, a little more. About like that? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> kiwi. One to two kiwi fruit. And that looks about right. Thank you. <laughs> That's right. Now, we can't put all this in here. What's that? Pineapple. Fresh pineapple. Cut. Pineapple. A half a fresh pineapple. So they put about, go ahead. Yeah, tell, tell you. Like a half. Because we, we can for just we, we can always add. Okay. Alright, put, put a couple more in there. Okay. You see you see where it says cup on there? Yes. No, the side of your oh, jaw. I see. Thank you. Eight ounces down here. You see it? Mm -hmm. Okay. One cup. How you're, much you supposed to put in there? Two cups. What's it done? Pineapple. Pineapple juice. Yes. What did it say? One to two cups of pineapple juice. Can it use soy milk? No. <laughs> Why not? Because soy milk does not contain these inflammatory properties. That's one cup and a fourth, so, so keep on. No other option. Hold up. Hold up, that's it, two cups. You ready? Wait, we, you your ginger. Ah, thank you. Thank you. Teaspoon. Teaspoon. There's a teaspoon, right? We're going to tell you. One teaspoon. Okay. Nah. You need two of those. You got to do it. Oh, man, we really. No, put it over here. There you go. That's good. That's all right. Don't be afraid of that. Go ahead. Put it. One. Oh, you need another one. Fill it up. Fill it up. You're very precise there. Okay. Go ahead. Good. Ah, that's two. Put the lid back on. All right. Let's put the lid on there. Let's see what we're going to do here. I did a mango jackfruit salt, salt smoothie for after my morning breakfast. Is that okay? Nah. Not after morning breakfast. No. No, not after morning, my dear. You, you, you want to eat, you know, if you're going to have it, just mix it together, but have that for your third meal. All right, now. You're going to turn it on, right? Ready? Ready? All right. You're all right. You can go to the bathroom. You can brush your teeth. It'll be all right. Yeah. Okay. You said go to the bathroom, brush your teeth, and you'll be all right. <laughs> no, I'm sorry. Is, that, is that what I hear? <laughs> no, I'm sorry. I'm, 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 Don, he want. I was telling. See, Carrie, Carrie said, "Will it stop by itself?" I said, "Well, you can go to the bathroom, brush your teeth, do whatever you want to, and come back. It go, it gonna quit off itself. Oh. It was just, you know, a matter of, you know, language." He, he need to know what he's right. Somebody else might need to know that. Wow, that looks power packed. Can the seeds of the papaya or at least some be left? Oh, sure, you can do that. The juice is gava good. Yeah, gava is good. Yes, ma'am. Very good. All right. Yeah. So it says, thank you. It says store in a tightly sealed container and keep refrigerated for a maximum of two days. Yeah, that means you. Anything. After that, it, if you keep it more than two days, it lose some of its vital potency. Okay. So best to get it. Okay. So let's see what we got here, Carrie. 
since you've been so gracious in making this, you will be the cupbearer. <laughs> Is that all right? And I might join you. Let's see. It's not. Is it pourable? Yeah, it might. Well, let's take the spoon here. And let me let me see. Just take it and hold it up and see it. It's not that bad. Do you think it's pourable? I think so. All right. Oh, yeah, it's pourable. So we're going to give everyone some? Yeah, after we taste it. You, you got to try it first, my dear. <laughs> oh, it depends on the fruit. I think it's a little too much ginger, okay, but I, I like it. I wish it was cold. You like it cold? I like it cold. It's all right. Got a lot of ginger in it. Mm -hmm. Okay. Why don't you sit it on the counter there and then turn that off so that you don't want to go. With this? Yeah, turn the, turn the back on. That way you right here? Go. Yes. Thank you. All right. So okay. Someone suggested adding the rest of the pineapple. I think that's a good idea. Where's the rest of the pineapple? Right, right over here. And there's also some more. Um, what else we got? Uh, there's some more papaya. Yeah. You can yeah. add a, yeah, Okay. Mm. Yeah. You can taste the ginger. Everything else is good. You can taste the ginger. It's kind of, it's kind of strong. The That's all right. The uh, ginger is going to improve circulation. Information is all right. But, but I couldn't measure it really You good. may have to pour some of that out because I don't know if that blender is going to be able to hold all of that plus the papaya. Okay. We got, we got this. We got in. the first one and then we'll put Yeah. The let's go ahead and let's blend that up. Y'all get ready to have your nightcap, okay? Turn it on, my dear. Thank you. Should we pour some more out? Yeah, I'm going to try it once more. I'm going to try it once more, too. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think? Thank you. Ah! I, didn't, I didn't do that. <laughs> That's all right, dear. I yeah. feel it on, on his hand. I was thinking about somebody else. <laughs> this is good. It's good? That's good. And it, it could stand some more papaya, but this is good. Let's go. So now we have to try. Can we put can we put the rest in here? Yeah, put the rest. You need to first, first, first pour some out. Because no. Other than that, you're gonna overflow it. Let's let's get these folks on. Pour it in one of the. Here, let's put it in one of these folks. Yeah. Now. A little bit more, she said. A little bit more. Okay. Uh, hold on a minute, dear. Yeah. So put all the papaya in. All the papaya. All right. So this should get it. No. No. We ain't putting no more ginger in there. But the pineapple will make it too late. Wait, just hold on. Let's see. Let's
Ferrari. Yes, our third cup. <laughs> you want me to be a cup bearer? Yeah, come on. Yeah, it's my third cup. <laughs> Woo! I'll let you pour your own. Thank you. Ah. This is excellent. That's what I said. <laughs> All right. You want to pour them up? Just pour them up and. Uh, you still taste a little ginger, but it's, it, I think it's good. Very good. Yes, ma'am. Yes. Can I get mine first? I gotta go. All right. Get, come on. Where you gotta go? I'm sorry. Oh. I don't have to go. <laughs> Thank you. Come on. Doc, you want this bowl over here? Yeah. No, that's no, that Ari, Ari wants that one. Ari wants the bowl. Ari wants the bowl. I want the ginger. You taste the ginger. Okay. You need a glass. It's like apple It don't taste like apple so Maybe. It's I mean, like, the yeah, the consistency. Uh, you don't taste the ginger. You taste the ginger? But it's not, it's the mouth. Huh? You taste the ginger? <laughs> you like ginger, man? The ginger is right in the second I don't like a lot of ginger. Don't drink it up, just savor it. Huh? If not, we'll go through this right here. Did everybody get some? I think this is about the end. We got to use this. Yeah. I'll, take, I'll take some of that one. Can I give you a small one? That's okay. Well, we have to use our backup. <laughs> I want some of that one. There you go. You got the last of it. Is that okay? Wait, let me have it. Can I keep okay. it? Uh, is, is it going to pour up right? Mm. Oh, I'm getting ready. I'm hanging over here. Oh, ah, the sit there. You could use the spoon to scoop it. Scoop it. Scoop it. Okay. Thank you. All right. How's the ginger in that? Is it all right? What's oh. We got a little bit. Carrie, delightful. Blend tech, dear. Blend tech. Okay. All right then. I believe so. All right then. So therefore, I. You got questions? People want to know if they can add extra things to it. Follow the basic recipe, please. It says one apple or mango. Yeah, that's right. Apple day, keep the doctor away. It says apple or mango. So I use both of them. Is that all right? All right, so that's good then. Look, power pack. Make your some. Easy to go. Now, those who... Uh, want the recipe? I have it right here. Just oh, wonderful! So just uh, yeah. Any closing question for we have prayer? Thank you all for your wonderful participation. Well, it says here you take you know one cup three times a day. It should last you for a few days. I would say, you know, you take. That's for one batch, right? Well, that might be one batch. Three cups, three times a day. You can take it for about a week, seven days. See how it goes. All right, then. Three times a day for about a week to see any results. 
All right. Is it, is it like candy to you guys? Very good. Uh, Gary, is this our glasses? Gary, these are your glasses. So any closing question? During the cleansing diet, are only vegetables and fruit eaten? Well, yes, you can have fruits in the morning, vegetables in the afternoon, but never eat the fruits and vegetables together. That'll be fine. All right then. Since there's no other questions, we'll close out with prayer. And thank God for a wonderful Sabbath day. Words like, did everybody get a recipe? All right, praise God. All right, let's have a word of prayer then. Then we can move forward. Let's pray. Bow your heads, I'm going to pray. Our dear eternal Father in heaven, we, we do thank you that we, in a time of peace, can come together to, to study, to understand how fearfully and wonderfully we are made in your divine plan to preserve the health of these wonderful bodies, that our minds might be clear to hear you speak to these minds. So I pray that you will be with us, that we will guide safely through the night to our health guests, the students, the staff, our friends online. And Lord, we just give you praise because you are worthy to be praised. We thank you for your love. In Jesus' name we pray for his name's sake. Amen. 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 Yes, yeah, we can, some of the brothers sit back, we'll take the chairs up for the health guests can move on. We'll break this down and set it up. Exodus 15, verse 26, the Lord.